I just bought the book Bushcraft by Morris Kahansky, and I decided that instead of just putting it on the shelf, I would read it and try to practice the skills inside. In order to motivate myself to do so, I'm starting a little outdoors book club on my channel. The purpose of these videos is to share information, uh, practice. I'm hoping to learn a lot in the process and hopefully you will too. One other thing, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to buy a book. You'll get to see what an average guy from Iowa does trying to practice these skills. You don't have to be a superman to go outside. Welcome to episode 17. In this episode, I'm going to cover the section of uh, the book that deals with knife sharpening. And so he, there's a bunch of stuff he talks in there and I'm gonna present most of it, but I'm gonna to have to fill in some of the information. Um, basically, I'm gonna start by showing um, a test that he talks about in there to say your knife is sharp. So I'm gonna show you the end point. And uh, the end point, you should be able to take your knife, he says, and you know easily slice um, paper like that. And uh, you know that's a in indication that you've got a nice sharp knife. Before I actually show some sharpening, um, I just need to tell you what my understanding of how a knife edge works is. So, if you have a knife edge, um, it is sharpened at the at the end there and it comes together in a point and and what you see is you see the knife coming together in a point um, what you're not seeing is what is going on microscopically and what is going on microscopically is that that point is actually an uneven surface like this and it's composed of lots and lots and lots of little jagged edges and those jagged edges uh, if you look up, do a Google Images search for microscopic view of knife edge, they actually look like little wispy hairs. And when you sharpen a knife, basically um, you're getting those nice little wispy hairs to line up really perfectly and very nicely straight uh, so that they do a very efficient job of cutting. When you have a dull knife, some of those teeth are missing and then others are bent and your edge ends up being kind of dull and more rounded than it is perfectly sharp and straight like that. Now one thing that I've noticed uh, over time using knives, and I sharpen all my own knives, um, especially this kitchen knife I use a lot, um, I sharpen them by hand and I actually do it quite frequently, but one thing I've noticed is you don't always have to go back to the um, stone uh, every time your knife isn't cutting as sharply and as nicely as you'd like it to. Uh, you can use, in you know, if, say your knife, you just sharpened it and uh, a couple days later it's just not cutting like you want it to. What you can do is you can take one of these, which is a steel, and, um, and just give it a little tune-up, like even that much. And what I think is going on there is... Um, you know, if, you, if you've just been using your knife for a couple days, it's not this big busted broken out thing missing teeth with like one little thing up. I think what happens is those teeth, um, maybe some of them broke out, but most of them just get bent over like that. So that your knife is still sharp, it's just that those teeth need to be straightened up. And when you take and run it over a steel, that's what you're doing, and it'll buy you a little bit of time between actually using the stone and um, uh, basically save you knife edge. And it only works for so long, uh, and then you actually do have to go back to the stone. So, um, what he talks about in the book is you have a, a stone, and he, he shows coarse and medium and fine stones. This is just a regular um, Norton fine India stone, uh, it's a bench stone, and I just I just put a little WD-40 on there. And uh, I've been doing this for a while, um, but I didn't wasn't always able to do this. You have to be able to set your um, knife on there and have the actual angle be the angle of the edge, so that you're not too steep like this and uh, you know, steepening that angle 
and you're not too shallow like this and grinding stuff off up above but not really affecting the edge. Um, and it, you do that uh, and you get good at that by practicing and what a lot of people do when they first start will be to take like some blue sharpie and put it along the edge and just see where they're hitting and just getting feedback like that over time kind of helps some people but what I do typically is I set the knife down perfectly flat and then I, I can see this, I raise it up until I see that the see that I'm actually just now starting to make contact with the edge where I want it to. And then um, I just start making passes and I try to keep it fairly even so that I move remove the same about amount of uh, material out from each side. So I'll do three on one side and then I'll flip over. I'll do three over here. And this this edge actually um, has has some little dings in it. And uh, if I was gonna try to make it um, shaving sharp, which I'm not, uh, I'd have to work on this on this stone for um, quite a while just to get, get all of those dings out and get all the issues with this particular edge sorted out. But basically what you do is you, you just keep going back and forth with your stone and you can use uh, you know there's all kinds of different stones available there's coarse stones that'll take metal off pretty quickly uh, and then there's medium stones that'll um, take it off less quickly and then there's fine stones and then there's these uh, crazy like 8,000 grit um, Japanese wet stones that are just uh, you know frankly pretty amazing uh, I don't have one of those um, but people are getting like sick crazy edges with those things and I think I'm getting to where I need to be at just a few more strokes here and now that I've gone over this with the stone um, I think it's probably gonna be a pretty good edge on there and the next step that he talks about is using uh, a hone or an even finer stone and the next step after that is using a strop now um, I don't actually own a strop I have a um, a leather belt for my um, belt grinder that I use but you don't have to have a strop you can just use a regular leather belt to do this step and basically what you want to do you don't want to carve into it like you would with a sharpening stone you want to draw the knife um, like this and and uh, keep drawing the knife and this this step actually can take a fair amount of time because what you're trying to do here is uh, remove the bead um, that has formed on your blade after sharpening and I can see the I can see the bead on here with my naked eye and basically what I'm trying to do is just remove this and I don't I don't think that the the edge or the the angle on here is quite as crucial as it is when you're using the stone because when you press down the the belt and the is going to conform to your edge is what I've been told <coughs> So I'm happy with this. Um, let's give this a test here. Let's see if we got it sharp. Yeah, and that's uh, certainly sharp enough for cutting cabbages and meat and, and ba basic things that I use a knife for in the kitchen. And it was literally that easy. So that's sharpening and we'll move on to another topic in the next episode.